Now we're going to talk about the OpenCL architecture. And in particular, we're going to talk about how commands are submitted to devices asynchronously. And we're going to start touching on the issues of manual data movement. But we'll go into that more into the next section. So OpenCL platforms have this sort of model for how things work. You've got the idea that you've got devices, GPUs and CPUs, that sit on some sort of bus. You know, it's actually PCIe in the implementation. And they have some sort of memory attached for them. And here I've shown the GPU has a lot more bandwidth to the GPU memory than the CPU does with these fatter arrows. So in an OpenCL platform, you have the devices that are supported by that vendor. So if it's an NVIDIA GPU, it's all platforms only going to have NVIDIA GPUs because, well, they don't make x86 devices and they certainly don't make AMD devices. Intel's platform has just the x86 CPU and any integrated graphics you might have on there. Whereas AMD's platform includes AMD GPUs and x86 CPUs. So that platform will include both of those. The reason the platform is important is because the platform determines how you can share data quickly. So if you want to share data quickly between a CPU and GPU, and the platform supports both devices, that means the vendor can have optimized data transfer between them. Now let's take a look at what OpenCL devices are. So here I've drawn them in a little more detail. Here's a GPU device, another GPU device, and a CPU device. These are OpenCL devices. Each device has its own global memory. So that's the memory that the device can access. And each device has a certain number of compute units. These are the hardware cores that do the actual computation within a device. Now it's important to note here that this CPU device, this is shared with the host processor. So this CPU device isn't just for OpenCL, it's also used by the operating system and by your regular program. It also shares the memory. So while the host device or the CPU device might look like it has a lot of global memory, that global memory may be used up by other things like the operating system and other programs. So let's take a look at what an OpenCL context is. So a context is a grouping of devices. So here we've got a context with one device. Here we've got a context with two devices. And you create context in OpenGL because, it, oh, sorry, in OpenCL because it tells you what can share data. So when you create a data object, if you want to share that data object back and forth between two devices, it has to be in the same context. And as we said before, all devices in the context need to be in the same platform. And this allows vendors to optimize the data movement between devices. So the last concept we need to deal with here are command queues. So here I've got three OpenCL de devices, two GPUs and one CPU, and I want to send work to them. So here's my program. It's running on the CPU, but remember the CPU can also be a device. And if I want to submit work to this AMD GPU, I need to create a command queue. I can then have my program put work into this queue and eventually the work will make it to the top of the queue and it will be executed on the device. If I want to execute on another device here, say the CPU, I have to create another command queue and my program has to put other work into that queue. Same thing if I want to operate on this third device over here. So this has some implications. We need a command queue for every device. That means there's no automatic distribution of work across devices. So I have three devices here, but I don't automatically use all three of them. My program has to manually divide up the work between these devices. So a question, what do you have to do to split your work across all three devices? Well, the answer here is you need to do these bottom two things. You need to copy the right data to all the devices. So you're going to have to take your data and make sure it's on each of the devices you want to do. And you're going to have to assign each device the work, right work items. So you're going to have to split up your work and so that each device knows which part of the work it's going to do. You don't have to write three different kernels. The same OpenCL kernel code will run on any of these devices. But if you use the same code on a CPU and a GPU, you may not get optimal performance. Very often you have to change the code for the CPU to take into account the fact that it has much lower memory bandwidth, but much larger caches, and many fewer threads.